الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله أستغفر الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم جزاك الله خير كم من بدرس قصم pens here just in case you want to make some notes you can there's about fifteen pens there Feel free to take them. Uh, sometimes, because we do sort of discuss extra things that are not in the book. Uh, so, if you want to write something down, just make sure you give me the pens back so that we can use them for the next lesson. Do so you want to come a bit closer? Or still, uh, feel free to. Today's our third, uh, our fourth lesson, and our third chapter is the chapter of jealousy. Uh, very important uh, subject. So the third of our forty-seven. Look at how close. What do you want to avoid? We show you. Um. So number three, page thirty-eight, and the third of our forty-seven uh, spiritual viruses or spiritual sins is jealousy. So this is about seven or eight pages long, inshallah. And uh, it's a very important one to discuss this because um, they say that the first sin committed in the skies was jealousy, and the first sin committed in the earth was jealousy. So in the skies, it was Shaitan jealous of Hazrat Adam and Eve. In the earth, it was uh, Kabil, uh, the son of Hazrat Adam and Eve, jealous of Kabil. But anyway, we'll go through this. Uh, so jealousy. Let's understand the definition. Then we're gonna have one verse of the Quran Kareem about jealousy, and then we'll have one hadith Sharif about jealousy, and then uh, the ruling. Uh, we know it's haram, and then there's a long story. It's an interesting one. We'll read this story, inshallah. The consequences of jealousy. A story that was written by Imam Abdul Rahman ibn Jawzi like uh, eight, nine hundred years ago, uh, and then there's fourteen cures for jealousy uh, as well. And definition of jealousy. Uh, as stated on page seven of the ninety-second, ninety-six page book of jealousy, published by Madawat Islamic Publication Department, Muktab Al Medina. So there's a book called Hasad in Urdu, and it's been translated. Uh, I think it's been translated into English. Jealousy. Uh, so there's a book, a ninety-six page book, just on that topic, only on jealousy, published by Madawat Islamic as well. So if you can get your hand, uh, uh, get your hands on that, or download it for free. Uh, but here is the definition of jealousy. Jealousy is to desire for someone to else to lose a worldly or religious blessing, or for him to not gain, not to obtain it in the first place. So jealousy is losing a blessing, losing a worldly or religious blessing, or uh, desiring that someone else loses it, or uh, he doesn't gain it in the first uh, place. He doesn't gain it in the first place. Uh, blessed verse of the glorious Quran, Quran, uh, Allah Almighty has stated in the Quran, Am yahsurun al nas ala ma atahu Allah min fadlih, faqad atayna ala Ibrahim al kitab wal hikmat wa atayna hum mulkan azima. The translation is on the next page. Or do they envy people, i.e., Muslims, over that what Allah has bestowed upon them from His grace? So we have bestowed the book and wisdom to the children of Ibrahim. And we granted them a great uh, kingdom. So Allah Taala has condemned jealousy in the Holy Quran, uh, in this uh, and many other verses of the Quran Sharif as well. We know that the very the second to last um, surah of the Quran Sharif, Kun Aawwu Bi Rabbil Falak, it finishes with the words "Women Sharri Hasidin Ida Hasad." I will we we'll talk a bit about that ayat kalima uh, as well, uh, so, and you know the hikmat. Uh, it comes towards the end of the Quran and it's the, the end of that surah as well. Uh, simplify, it, it signifies that hasad is like the end of all evil. I, it's the, the biggest evil. But we'll look at that in a few seconds as well. There's a blessed hadith. Uh, jealousy eradicates good deeds. Sayyiduna Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrated that the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned, avoid jealousy. Uh, for it devours good deeds just as fire devours wood. Jealousy destroys good deeds just like uh, fire destroys uh, wood. Yeah, just to remind anyone, uh, some brothers have just walked in now. Feel free to grab a chair if you want. 
ठीक है सो जेलसी ईट्स अवे योर गुड डीज जस्ट अवे फायर बर्न्स वुड अने अनाहिलेट से टूटी रूलिंग ऑन जेलसी feeling jealous voluntarily and deliberately as well as acting in accordance with it or expressing it through your bad body language is forbidden haram and will lead to hell jealousy is haram it's one of the uh, major sins jealousy is uh, haram Uh, this is a story it's a long story but i think it's worth uh, just going through it because it's an interesting one Uh, again this was written in a book called Yunul Hikayat an Arabic book which is written about 8 900 years ago very uh, around uh, approximately 8 years ago a story a shocking co- consequence of an envy of a hasid okay a man approached a king in his palace and asked for permission to make a statement granting him permission the king sat the man on a chair in front of him and instructed now say what you wish what is it you want to say and the man said do good to the muhsin i the one who does good to you and the one who does evil will automatically get the return of his evil uh, so do do good to a good doer do good to someone who does you favors and the one who treats you bad he will automatically face the consequence of his evil impressed with this advice the king rewarded the man now witnessing this so seeing the king reward someone a particular courtier of the king uh, became jealous of this individual so jealous of the fact that the king is liking someone um so uh, that's one of the main causes of jealousy isn't it you see one of your seniors your employer your ceo of a company someone who uh, uh who's above you uh liking someone else admiring another employee or a, a worker more than you so he became jealous of this individual and was pained by the thought of a common person a common earning so much respect and admiration from the king eventually intoxicated by the disease of jealousy he approached the king and conspired in a very flattering manner so he's come to the king the jealous person has come to the king and he's like he's uh, setting uh, uh he's playing a game now he's setting a trap uh, the, the the person he's jealous of the one uh, that is just a normal person who's come and back in those days you know if you impress the king you get a reward uh just by doing some sort of trick or saying something that the king likes you get a reward so this common person who got a reward from the king this court is jealousy he's now setting a trap for him so he comes to him on the top of page 40 now your majesty the man who was speaking to you just now said some pleasant things yet he actually despises you and believes that you have bad breath so he's lying isn't he hearing this the king demanded what evidence do you have to prove this to which the envier the hasid he replied your majesty if you do not believe me you can test him summon him call him when he approaches you he will cover his nose in order to avoid smelling the odor of your mouth hearing this the king instructed leave go away i will not make a judgment about this matter until further investigation following his departure the courtier leaves from the royal court the jealous man visited the victim of his jealousy in order to invite him for a meal the man accepted the invitation and accompanied his jealous host to a meal filled with plenty of garlic plenty of garlic so he's lied the envy has lied to the king saying this man who you just given a reward and he said something you like remember what he said uh, he just said oh, made a wise comment uh, if you're good uh, be good to whoever does you a favor and if people are evil then don't treat them evil they'll fall in their own trap whoever digs a well for his brother or a ditch for his brother will fall in himself <coughs> so Uh, he's then lied to the king the envy has lied to the king saying this guy actually doesn't like you he thinks you've got bad breath and then he's gone to him and he's invited him to a dawat and he's filled loads of garlic uh, which made his mouth smell consequently after finishing the meal the man's mouth emanated a strong garlic odor nevertheless he returned home uh, before long a royal messenger arrived at his home to deliver a message from the king the summon the king has summoned you to his court immediately said the messenger when the man arrived at the royal palace along with the messenger the king sat him down in front of him and instructed repeat to me what you said that day that wise comment the visitor replied be good to anyone who does good to you and an evil doer will face the consequence of his evil so people who treat you badly they fall in their own conspiracies uh, anyone who digs a well for you will fall in himself after the man finished his comment the king instructed come close to me 
As he drew closer to the king, he immediately covered his mouth with his hand in order to avoid irritating the king with the smell of garlic emanating from his mouth. So he's covering his mouth because he, his mouth is smelling, not because he believes that the king's mouth is smelling. But the king's been lied to and they're both being set up by this Hasid. This is what Hasidin do, gossiping, lying to one person, going and setting, trying to get someone killed or whatever. So witnessing this, the king was convinced and thought to himself. So remember the king seeing uh, this person who's innocent, uh, he's covering his mouth because his mouth's smelling. But the king's been told before that he's going to cover his mouth when he comes to you because he thinks that your mouth smells. And the king thought to himself that courtier was right. This man does think that I have bad breath. The king formed a negative judgment about the poor man and without any further investigation decided to sentence him to a devastating punishment. Subsequently, he wrote a letter to his governor with the following instruction. Remember, this was like eight, eight to nine hundred years ago, this, this story. If a king didn't like you, it, it'd be the worst of worst punishments. Uh, governor, so this is the letter that the king has written, or oh, governor, kill this man as soon as he reaches you, after which you must fill his corpse with straw before delivering his, uh, uh, delivering it to me, okay, delivering it to me. So kill him and fill his body with straw and then deliver. Obviously, excruciating punishment. The king stamped the letter with the royal seal, handed it to the man and instructed, take this letter to a certain governor. The king has given the letter to that guy who he wants killed, but he doesn't know what's in the letter. And he said he had just passed this on to a governor. So he doesn't know that the letter inside that he's taking to the governor, when he gets to the governor, the governor is going to read it. And the king's written, uh, this person who's brought the letter to you, kill him. But he doesn't know. So he's just taken the letter from the king. He's just innocently taking the letter. It was a royal custom that whenever the king wished to bestow a heavy reward upon anyone, he would send the lucky receiver with a written message to his governor who in turn bestowed vast rewards upon the carrier of the script. Never before had the king issued a punishment sentence to any governor. This was the first time he had issued a written punishment to his governor. So the letter actually looked like it was a reward from the king. It was a reward that the, he was going to take the letter to the governor and the governor was going to reward it. Nevertheless, the innocent man departed from the royal court without realizing that the letter was actually his death sentence. And he was thinking it was a reward letter. On his way to the governor, the innocent man is going to the governor. He came face to face with that same jealous courtier, the envier, who asked. Now, remember what the contents of the letter are. Kill the person who brings this letter to you. Fill his body with straw and bring him to me. That's the contents of the letter. But it's sealed. The innocent person, he's taken it. Page 42. The envier, the jealous guy who set the trap between the king and the innocent person. He asks, brother, where are you going? And he answers, I made a comment in front of the king, a wise comment for which he ordered me to deliver a sealed letter to a certain governor. That is my destination, he responded. The envier maliciously requested, brother, hand the letter over to me. And I will make sure that it is received by the governor. So he's thinking it's a, uh, this is the envier, the Hasid. He's thinking it's a reward letter and get it off him and I'll take it to the governor and get a gold or whatever. Innocently, the man handed the letter over to his envious associate who subsequently took it and delightedly proceeded towards the governor all the way thinking to himself, this must be a message from the king with an instruction for the governor to reward its deliverer, to reward whoever has the letter in his hand. I am so lucky I have fooled that man into handing the letter over to me. Now I will be rich. Now, you know what's going to happen, don't you? The envious courtier gladly proceeded to the governor whilst fantasizing about a lavish life. Little did he know that the fire of jealousy had thrust him towards the face of death and that on his arrival, he would be greeted by his executioner. Anyhow, he reached the governor and respectfully conveyed the king's message. As soon as the governor read the letter, he asked his visitor, do you know what the king has written inside this message? And he answered, the jealous Hasid answered, his majesty must have ordered reward for me and that my needs be fulfilled. You fool, the king has commanded me to execute you, then fill your skin with straw before returning your corpse to him, replied the governor. Hearing this, the envier was stunned and begged the governor, I swear by Allah Almighty, this message was not meant for me, in fact, it was meant for someone else. You can send one of your people to confirm this from the king. Refusing to accept his plea, the governor remarked, there is no need for us to verify 
this matter from the king. This letter is stamped with the royal seal, and so I must obey his majesty. Following this, he instructed the executioner to commence the execution of that envier, then remove his skin and stuff it with straw before returning his corpse to the king. I said before, well, this is a this is a book was written 600 years ago, so that was the kind of excruciating punishment kings gave just because you disrespected them. As usual, the envied man, the envied man, so the envier, the Hasid, he's dead. The envied Mahsud, he as usual visited the king as per his routine and repeated his counsel, he repeated his advice. Be good to anyone who does good to you and an evildoer will soon face the consequence of his evil. If someone's bad to you, don't be bad back. He, uh, his, bad akhla, his bad akhlaki, if someone's bad with you, his bad akhlaki is itself a punishment. The fact that he's, uh, he's not a decent person itself is azab. Leave him to his evil. The king was shocked to see the man safe and sound. Remember, the king had uh, sent a letter with this Mahsud, the envied, and expecting him to be dead by now. Uh, what happened about that message I gave you? He asked, the king asked. He answered, I was on the way to the governor with your message, but I met so-and-so courtier on the way who asked me to hand it over to him, so I did. Hence, he delivered the message to the governor. The king said, the man you speak of told me that you believe I have bad breath. Is this true? The king responded. He innocently answered, Your Majesty, such a thought has never crossed my mind. Then why did you cover your mouth with your hand when I told you to come close to me that day? The king asked. He answered, Your Majesty, just before I came to you, that same man invited me to a meal. He fed me a lot of garlic, which made my mouth smell. When you ordered me to move closer to you, I did not wish to disturb you with my order emanating from my mouth. And so that's why I covered it with my hand. Not because I thought your mouth smells. After hearing this, the king remarked, you lucky man. You were right. Your words are absolutely true. An evildoer will soon face the consequence of his evil. That man intended to harm you and wished for you to be punished. Yet he himself faced the consequence of his evil. It is true that he who digs a hole for another will fall into himself. Oh, good man, sit in front of me and repeat that statement to me. So he sat in front of the king and repeated be good to anyone who does good to you, and an evildoer will soon automatically face punishment for his evil. Quite a lengthy story, lengthy story but I think it's worth uh, reading and it's a very um, useful uh, story. You know, how people, obviously, that happens on, I think that happens on a daily basis. Obviously, no, one's, no one can kill you in this day and age, but on a daily basis, in our work environments, you know, whether it's religious environments that we work in, or whether it's worldly environments. You've got these conspiracies going on, haven't you? And people are getting sacked. People are getting, what's the opposite of promotion? De demoted um, based on some hasad, hasid, who just can't take you being more talented than him or a CEO or an employer, uh, your boss, giving you more attention, giving you more tabajo, giving you more praise. And rather than uh, hasidin, rather than your, your uh, workmates, uh, develop their own talents, be more talented, do their own job better, they want to pull you down. So this is a day-to-day, -day. it happens on a daily basis, wherever we are, whatever uh, workplace you are. And religious workplaces are not exceptions uh, to that. Everyone's pulling each other's legs. So that is a useful uh, story and how people lie, how, how Hasidim can just like manipulate situations, uh, go to one person, lie to him, uh, go to one another, say something, and then have them both meet and cause friction between them. Uh, you know, hence why back, backbiting, gossiping, that's a combination of sins, a jealousy, conspiring against a Muslim, hypocrisy, that's haram as well, lying, uh, backbiting, jubal uh, khori, it's about five or six sins all uh, in one. Let's study the 14 cures for jealousy. Now, presented here are 14 cures for jealousy from the page 68 of the 96, 96 page book, Jealousy. Uh, so we said earlier that there's a book called Jealousy or Hasad, published by Dalit Islam, just on that topic, only on the topic of jealousy. Uh, number one, so number one of the 14 cures is repent. Repent from jealousy, rather all sins, by saying, O oh Allah Almighty, I confess before you that I was jealous of my brother. Please forgive me for all of my sins. I mean, number two, pray 
Uh, o oh Allah Almighty, I wish to be liberated from jealousy for your pleasure. Please cure my heart from this spiritual disease and grant me perseverance in abstaining from it. And number three, be content with the distribution of Allah Almighty. In other words, tell yourself Allah Almighty is pleased with bestowing these blessings upon this brother of mine. He is our Lord. He, Azawadil, can grant whatever to whomever, whenever, and in whatever quantity he pleases. When we're jealous of someone, it's like we he's got something that we don't want him to have. Uh, uh, and I, I will, uh, after I've gone through all the cures, I want to talk to you about there's nothing wrong with if you see something that uh, you like, something that another person has, and you don't want him to lose it, you just want the same thing to yourself. And if you can't have it, then you don't want him to lose it. That's okay. Jealousy is when you want someone to lose a blessing, that you want it yourself. And if you can't have it, no, I don't want anyone to be able to have it. If I can't have it, I don't want anyone. That's, that's hasad. Or wanting someone to not, uh, someone who's below you, wanting him to not even get to your position. That's a jealousy as well. So jealousy isn't just seeing something nice with someone. Uh, that is haram. Uh, but uh, not wanting someone to get to your position or not wanting someone to get promoted, that's jealousy as well. Wanting someone to be deprived of a blessing altogether. So when someone's jealous, it's like he's arguing with Allah Ta'ala. You know, who's given him that blessing Allah Ta'ala is? So it's like being jealous and not being pleased with what he has. It's like you're disagreeing with the distribution of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's what the ulama say, that jealousy is you're actually disagreeing with Allah, ma'az Allah. It's like you're arguing. It's like you're saying, Ya Allah, why did you give him more than you gave me? I'm more qualified. Well, we both started off in the same position. We've got the same qualifications, same degrees. Yeah, he's progressed. I work harder as well. He doesn't work as hard as I do and he's progressed. There's all sorts of hikmats in that. Worldly progression is not a dalil, it's not a confirmed dalil and sign that Allah is pleased with that person. Okay? Um, for some people, uh, sickness and poverty makes their iman stronger than what if uh, wealth and good health would have made it. Okay. So number four, uh, contemplate about the perils of jealousy. Jealousy displeases Allah Almighty and His beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It ruins good deeds. It is a catalyst, a cause for other sins like backbiting, negative assumption, tale telling, destroys spiritual tranquility, etc. So jealousy is not just one sin. It's a root. It's a foundation of many other sins. Number five, contemplate about your death. Soon I will depart from the earth and descend into my dark grave. Contemplation about death is a highly effective Highly effective remedy for abstaining from any sin, any sin, especially jealousy. Contemplate about the blessings that are causing you to be jealous. If they are worldly blessings, then remember that they are short term. Hence, why be jealous of a temporary superiority that another human being has over you? If they are religious blessings or excellences, then they are favors bestowed upon another human being by Allah Almighty. Hence, being jealous of Allah's favors upon others is unwise. Number seven, do not contemplate about other people's blessings. This usually leads to slow self-esteem, which subsequently causes jealousy. Observe people with lesser blessings than yourself and be grateful to Allah. Ta'ala. So don't always look at people, uh, you know, the good stuff that people have that you don't have. Don't always stare. Obviously, if you, that's what you're always looking at. You're always looking at the cars uh, that the people are driving that you don't have, the more expensive cars. Then you'll end up having jealousy in your house. Looking at, uh, social media doesn't help with that either. Social media doesn't help. With that, either that if you, for us amongst the many harms, uh, social media is a double edged sword. Um, the obviously, definitely, there's benefits, but amongst one of the many harms is the increase of jealousy. Uh, increasing of jealousy, just looking at uh, these lives which people portray to be perfect lives, and everyone's happy, everyone on social media is happy, and everyone out, outside of social media in real life is sad. But in actual fact, a lot of the people on social media uh, with the um, uh, the glamorous sort of TikTok and Facebook and Instagram videos, a lot of them are even depressed and going through major psychological and mental issues. But obviously, they're not always going to tell us that. And they're going to make us look like they've got big mansions and they're happy and they, they've got good stable jobs and they're earning a lot. So jealousy is one of the things that's been fueled by um Social media, amongst other harms, so we've got to be very, very careful. Social media addiction and um, gaming addiction have even scientifically, medically recognized as medical disorders now, aren't they? They have been for many years now. 
and just like you can be depressed and gambling is an addiction uh, so gaming addiction and social media addiction is medically uh, classed as a mental uh, disability it can get to that extreme and there's rehab centers in certain areas to treat especially places like J japan where they're crazy about games computer games especially uh, so we have to be careful about our kids be careful with yourself as well on social media not just your kids but especially with your kids don't let them get obsessed it's one thing just using social media it's another thing being obsessed with it uh, and being obsessed with games number eight uh, contemplate about the benefits of abstaining from jealousy refraining from jealousy will earn you the pleasure of allah ta'ala and his beloved prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam it will help you to reach paradise earn you a space in the shade of allah's throne tomorrow on judgment day etc number nine occupy your time with rectifying your flaws if you constantly stare at other people's qualities then you will fail to rectify your own character on the contrary, if you occupy your time in rectifying your own character flaws, then you will not be vacant enough to indulge in the sin of jealousy. Number 10, convert jealousy into positive admiration. When you notice someone's blessing, do not wish for him to lose it and that it transfers to you. Rather, pray that Allah Almighty increases that blessing for him. And you can want it, just don't want him to lose it. Number 11, contemplate about ways to convert malice into love. If you are jealous of someone, then you should say salam to him before he does. Extend gifts to him, console him in times of sickness, congratulate him in times of celebration, assist him whenever needed, praise him sincerely in front of other people, uh, benefit him as much as you can, etc. Number 12, create a habit of being happy for other people. It is the divine will of Allah Almighty and his universal system that he has not blessed all humans equally. Besides this, it is not guaranteed that if someone loses a blessing, that it will definitely come your way. So rather than being jealous, you should be happy for your brother's blessing. Number 13, use spiritual remedies. In order to abstain from jealousy, you ought to persistently pray to Allah Almighty for forgiveness as well as for protection from the devil's tricks and delusions. Whenever the emotion of jealousy emerges inside your heart, you should recite, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem before turning to your left and acting as though you are spitting uh, without producing the saliva, saliva three times. So this is, uh, I think we've studied this before as well, haven't we? Even before namaz, if you have a lot of waswasas in namaz, before you start namaz, uh, to your left shoulder, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani wa-jeem, and you can do that whenever you are bothered by the shaitan's waswasas. It's not just for namaz, um, jealousy, arrogance, whenever you feel shaitan's messing with your head. Um, shaitan's like, uh, if, you, if you give him a finger, he'll grab your arm. If you give him an inch, he'll take a yard. Uh, you entertain him a bit, he grabs you. Entertain him, you know, one or two of his waswasas, then he knows, Acha, here, I can do more. I can get a proper grip on this guy. Um, number 14, and the final uh, uh, of the four Q, 14 cures, follow pious deeds in the present turbulent era. This is a specific booklet that in Dawat Islam, our Sheikh has given us a booklet of 72 good deeds, basically a questionnaire to ask ourselves uh, before sleeping every night, how about then these good deeds, <coughs> etc. as well, uh, inshallah. So Alhamdulillah, that's how chapter 3 finished. Um, about jealousy, uh, we started off with the definition of jealousy, desiring for someone to lose a worldly or religious blessing, or desiring that he doesn't get that blessing in the first place. So, it's, so he hasn't got it and you just don't want him to get it. Then we did a verse of the Quran, we did a hadith, uh, we did the ruling on jealousy which is haram. Then we did a long uh, interesting story which is worth remembering and then we did 14 uh, cures of um, jealousy. Um, I did mention earlier, so the first sin ever committed on the, in the sky uh, was jealousy, uh, a devil being jealous of uh, and it's also the first sin ever committed on the earth as well Kabil, the son of Adam alayhi salam being um, jealous of uh, uh, Habil uh, Jealousy is obviously um, like um, uh, if we look at the tafsir of Surah Falak Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Falak من شر ما خلق ومن شر الراسك إذا وكب من شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد. Um, and if you look at the tafsir of that, it's like jealousy is the ultimate of all of the evil vices. 
I mean, jealousy is caused by greed, by stinginess, arrogance, and self-conceit. Um, and it's like the ultimate, uh, the ultimate sin. And very hard to uh, cure jealousy, but it's it's for us to try to understand it. To understand what jealousy is, understand the definition, and understand how to cure it is for us. It's for us for every single Muslim. It's uh, a sin that probably every Muslim commits for someone to say he's not jealous of anyone. We might not je be jealous of anyone here, but there might be someone else that we're jealous of somewhere else. Okay. Um, so uh, jealousy is a sin that probably not a single human being that doesn't have it unless you really worked on yourself to take it out of yourself. So important to avoid jealousy is tawakkul as well. Having uh, tawakkul, having trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because jealousy is uh, one of the root causes, if you look at uh, why a person is um, uh, jealous and the uh, the root causes for jealousy, uh, jealousy is caused by uh, uh, arrogance, uh, a fear of losing uh, wealth, the desire for wealth, the desire for fame, the desire for fame. Um, Imam Ghazali lists seven causes in Ihya al Enmity causes jealousy as well. Imam Ghazali says some people are jealous, they just have a, uh, the khabis or nafs. They're just wretched people, they can't see anyone else happy. Some people are just jealous, they just are wretched people, they cannot see anyone happy. And Imam Ghazali says that this, this is the worst uh, uh, cause. Out of the seven causes of jealousy that Imam Ghazali mentions in the Ihaal Room, that being wretched, just having a khabis, nafs, uh, that's like the worst one because they're just people who are jealous for no cause They just can't see other people happy and it's very hard to treat that as well And Imam Ghazali says that most people today are jealous for more than one reason. There's not just one uh, Very few people are jealous for just one uh, Reason so jealousy stems from the love of fame the love of fortune So if you have tawakkul again, you know, we talked about sincerity didn't we? If you are sincere and you're not bothered about fame then inshallah you won't be jealous either uh, if you have tawakkul, which means you trust Allah Ta'ala, you're not greedy for money, then inshallah you'll be safe from jealousy as well. Uh, but a desire for fame and desire for fortune uh, are going to lead to uh, being jealous as well. Uh, if we look at uh, just a few points about uh, uh, some random points Imam Ghazali Rahmatullahi mentions, uh, the closer Jealousy increases, uh, je there's different levels of jealousy and the most jealousy is amongst two people of the same profession who are very cl in a close vicinity uh, to takeaway owners, uh, to solicitors, to doctors, uh, to mechanics who are close together uh, because they're on that, you know, they're on each other's turf. Uh, they will, their, their jealousy will be more compared to someone of the same profession who's in a different town to you. You're not really too bothered about the one. He's not as competent. Uh, competition between you and someone of the same profession in a different town. The jealousy won't be as strong as it will be someone who's on the same, in the same area as you. Uh, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did say that there are three things that will always remain in my ummah. Uh, the three things that will always remain in this ummah. And uh, those three things are badfali, superstition, jealousy, and badgumani, and suspicion. Uh, but then he also gave the ilaj. He said, whenever you're jealous, ask, do istighfar. Ask Allah for forgiveness. When you're superstitious, then don't let that stop you from doing whatever you were doing. And when you uh, are suspicious of someone, don't let the suspicion settle in your heart. Expel it from your heart as quickly as you can. So these three sins, the Prophet ﷺ did say they will remain. You know, he, he prophesied that this umat, suspicion, jealousy, bad judgments about people. But he said in, uh, instantly cure them. The Holy Prophet ﷺ. Uh, and he, Imam Ghazali mentions in Minhajul Abidin, jealousy is common amongst common people, it's more common amongst religious people. It's more common amongst religious people, Abidin, Zahideen, and scholars, than it is in the common person. Jealousy is more common amongst religious people 
uh, and there was I just wanted to uh, yeah uh, the Sufiya say that a jealous person is worse than the devil uh, there's a narration in Tafsir Kabir that the devil once visited Pharaoh the devil visited Pharaoh and he knocked on the door and uh, it was a weird conversation between the devil and Pharaoh and the devil uh, knocks on Pharaoh's door and Pharaoh says who are you uh, who, who is it and like you say who, who's on the other end of the door who is it and Iblis say, uh, sarcastically said if you were God you wouldn't need to ask me that you know Pharaoh claimed to be God didn't he so Iblis is sarcastically says that if you were God you wouldn't need to uh, me to ask uh, you wouldn't need to ask me that uh, so Shaitan enters and uh, Pharaoh and Shaitan are together and you'd think that the two worst creations are having a conversation. Um, and Pharaoh says, is there anyone worse on this planet than me and you? Uh, are, are we the two most even people or is there anyone worse than us? And uh, the devil says, yes, a, a hasid, a jealous person is worse than it. It's because of hasid that I've got to where I've got. That was Shaitan's answer. Uh, There is a, a hadith of the Prophet save yourself from jealousy also by hiding blessings. This is a hadith. Uh, there's a, one hadith is Kullu ni'matin mahsood. Everyone who's blessed will have definitely be a victim of jealousy. That's one hadith. There's another hadith that says save yourself from jealous people by hiding your blessings. So you know there's a, there's a time to show you there's a third hadith Allah likes uh, to see his servants showing their blessings. The one hadith is saying hide them, the other one saying show them. So there's a time and place for everything, isn't it? You know, show your blessing, don't, uh, you know, uh, show that Allah Ta'ala has given you mal, dress in a decent way, uh, behave in an appropriate way. But at the same time, the Prophet said, hide your blessings as well to avoid uh, jealousy. So at times, so flaunting your blessings all the time, that's not exactly a wise thing to do, especially again, coming back to social media, uh, uh, even showing pictures of your home and your family and your children and your libas and your car, uh, you're inviting nazari bud as well on the evil eye. Someone can put nazar on your things, even of those pictures as well. Uh, so how do they? So flaunting the blessings all the time. That's not really wise. Just the last few uh, important things. Uh, Imam Ghazali rahmatullahi says in one of his books um, that uh, and. There's levels of jealousy. One is uh, you see um, it's a talent or knowledge or wealth or a good house or a good family or just someone's happy and you want him to use it and uh, you want it for yourself. And that can be anything. That can be wife, being jealous of someone's wife, children, house, car. Okay. So wanting him to lose it. A uh, second type of jealousy, which is actually second level of jealousy, is more haram than the first level, which is you want someone to lose a blessing even if you don't get it. So you don't even want it for yourself. You just can't bear seeing other people with it. You just want him to lose it. You don't even want it for yourself. That's even more haram than the first one. That's more haram. Level two is more haram. Uh, and then there's uh, a third level of jealousy, Imam Ghazali says, that you uh, don't want someone to lose a blessing you but you don't want him to uh, progress more than you okay. you don't mind someone being equal to you but you are uh, you can't bear to see someone with more so equality you're okay with you don't you can't see him ex excel you this is jealous this is haram as well the three levels of jealousy you don't want him to lose it you don't mind him being on the same level but you can't bear to see him excel you okay and uh, I'll just finish off final one or two points. Uh, I said, I did touch on this earlier. If you see a blessing with someone, you don't want him to lose it. Uh, and you just say, Ya Allah, can I have the same as him? And if I can't have it, then I don't want him to lose it. May Allah bless him. This is called a rushk. This is jais. In dunyavi things, it's mustahab in religious things. In religious things, it's good to have positive envy. Rushk is the Urdu word. Ikhita is the Arabic. Having... Uh, so a uh, rush which is positive envy wanting what someone else has but not one uh, you're wanting what someone else has without wanting to lose it this can be jais if it's a village a worldly thing remember you don't want him to lose it 
this mustahab if it's a religious quality it's actually wajib you know like if a bay namazi sees a namazi it's wajib for him to want to be like him if uh, someone who's not paying zakat is seeing someone who's paying zakat it's wajib to want to be like him uh, because uh, so uh, wanting what someone else has can be wajib if that's a religious thing which is necessary for us like namazi a bay namazi seeing a namazi it's wajib for him to want to be like him if he if he doesn't want to be like him it means he's okay he's satisfied with being a bay namazi and that's haram that's haram if a bay namazi sees a namazi and does not want to be like him doesn't have it means he's okay being a bay namazi and that's haram being satisfied with being a sinner is another haram if that makes sense uh, and final final point mufti amdar khan nami says if this is a uh, if a maldar if a rich person is doing kufr or zulm with his wealth then it's jaiz to desire for him to lose his wealth so that his kufr or his zulm stops if a wealthy person is doing kufr or oppressing people because of his wealth it's permissible to desire that he loses his wealth because you want the oppression to stop not not due to jealousy uh, you want the oppression to stop it's permissible to want to lose him wanting to lose his uh, wealth so these were just some extra points that i was uh, this notes i've made over the year as a student and whilst teaching classes as well allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves from jealousy that's our third chapter done alhamdulillah jazakallah for your attendance and for your patience and uh, your attention uh, as well uh, just before you leave one last point uh, i mentioned you the last lesson on friday the very last thing i said i was talking about the sabuf and muftis was it that people have separate one of the biggest dangers in our era uh, one of the biggest problems that we've been facing for past 40 years people have been given as the impression that sufis and fatwas are two totally different things and it's wrong just wanted to add a point which is general but it's a thing that you need to know um these days uh, it's got nothing to do with jealousy indirectly it has but just more to do with what we spoke about on friday it's one line for a peer it's not a condition to be a mufti for a peer it's not a condition to be a mufti for a peer is not a condition like someone can be a kamil peer qualified sheikh not be a mufti we're living in a day and age where people number one do bad there's so many peers out there more than 50% of them don't deserve to be called peers people in islam that right center whoever's famous they do bad to them okay even if the peers are not even qualified no fulfill the four conditions of being peers but secondly there's another big musibat is that a lot of these peers who are not even muftis act like they are and their murids quote their peers saying well this is jaiz or this is not jaiz because my peer said it's not a condition for a peer to be a mufti a peer can be a qualified peer without being a mufti it's important for us to understand that just because your own peer or someone else's peer and we get into conversation with sunnis ourselves my peer said this but hold on is your peer a mufti if he's not a mufti and he's got an opinion which goes against all of the hanafis hanafi muftis of the past then his his opinion is irrelevant so that might sound like a random point but i just felt it was important that point is important to save your aqeedah and to save your fiqh as well and it's more to do with what we we're talking about on friday about uh the sufi uh clean your heart but at the same time always focus on fatwas as well and fiqh you know, always focus on that so just a random important point someone can be a common people not a mufti so not important it's not necessary to believe that every peer is a mufti someone can be a qualified peer not be a mufti being a mufti is something else someone can be an expert in hadith and tafsir but he's not a mufti and religious rulings can only be given by muftis ye ke jazakallahu khairan la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim astaghfirullah thank you uh, very much jazakallahu